Today, my presentation is titled, There is a bit of a ripple effect, a social identity perspective on the role of third places and aging in place. Loneliness is an emerging public health crisis with one in four Australians reporting that they feel lonely at least one day a week and have few people to talk to. Research also shows that feeling lonely poses a bigger risk for premature death than either smoking or obesity. And older people are especially vulnerable to feeling socially isolated, particularly those who are retired from work, live alone, who are older than 75, who don't have children or relatives living nearby and have few contacts with family and community and who are physically frail. We live in an increasingly aging society. For the first time in our evolutionary history, seniors over the age of 65 have outnumbered children who are younger than five years old. The data shows that the vast majority of older adults in Australia have a strong preference to age in place and stay living in their own homes for as long as possible because they have an emotional attachment to their home and they like the familiarity of living in their local area. However, being able to age in place is not the same as being able to age well. And gerontologists have long moved away from the defining aging well as being simply diseased free and able-bodied. They promote the idea that aging well also encompasses meaningful social interactions and community engagement. Third places is a term coined by sociologist Ray Oldenburg and refers to places where people spend time between home, their first place, and work, their second place. Third places are places such as public libraries, community centres, coffee shops, and play an important role in strengthening people's sense of community. But the fundamental question is, will simply investing in building more third places lead to a less lonely population? because the research shows that less than a third of seniors at risk of social isolation actually use community centres. To understand when and why older adults access community spaces and how they derive health benefit from the use of third places, we propose using a social identity approach. The social identity approach centres on the idea that our groups and associated identities are important for health and well-being. When the groups that we belong to are important to how we define ourselves, this provides people with a sense of purpose, meaning, agency, and consequently leads to good health outcomes, constituting what is known as a social cure. And there is consistent evidence showing that positive social identities are a psychological resource that people can harness during major periods of life change, such as in retirement, recovering from illness and trauma. To gain insight into why older adults attend third places, we conducted a case study with participants who happened to be members of a well-functioning suburban bridge club. This bridge club started about eight years ago with 30 members. It's run as a non-profit by elected volunteers who are bridge players themselves. Since then, it has grown to over 400 members. As you can see from these descriptive statistics, there is about 20 to 30% of members who could qualify as being at risk of social isolation. The Bridge Club is located in a suburb where the house price is 8% above the metropolitan average and has an aging population. This council owned space is an unremarkable single story building with a small covered patio space. The interior consists of three small rooms with a small kitchenette. Because of this layout, members who require the use of walking aids find it very hard to move around. Therefore, members in the organising committee are very conscious of the spatial inadequacies of the club's physical environment and have a subcommittee who work tirelessly to lobby to their council for better facilities for the group. In terms of attendance, this chart shows that throughout a one year period, the average session had 11 tables per session. It, what it means is that this 80 square meter council building can generate over 2000 contact hours a year, attended on average by 70 people a day. So even though it's a tight squeeze, the space is very well used. The data was collected using a series of focus group interviews involving 31 participants. People in each discussion group were known to each other. Many were bridge partners. These discussions focused around their experiences of being part of this club. 
the discussions were recorded and later transcribed for thematic analysis. Thematic analysis involves looking for commonalities between what people are saying across the groups of interviews. Once analyzed, these themes were presented to a number of participants individually for validation check. During this process, each theme and their supporting quotes were read aloud to them and participants reflected on whether the themes were true to their experience. Three themes were, were extracted. The first theme was that the physical and social structures of the club both enabled and restricted social participation. In terms of the enabling physical environment, Having a permanent clubhouse meant that the committee could take ownership over the space. Having tables and chairs set up and ready to go was seen as very practical and having a secure base of operation was seen to provide members with a place to go. However, the inadequacy of the spatial layout and lack of amenities was seen to restrict social participation in terms of the size of the group and presented a barrier to accessibility when members have foreseeable mobility issues. In terms of the enabling social structure, this refers to club norms and the way the club is set up. Members felt it was important that participation is affordable and inclusive of players who can come on the day without a partner or players of all levels of bridge. Having a supportive leadership committee was seen to help with things running smoothly and having a few social events outside of bridge further enabled participation. However, there were some participants who felt that the club was too focused on bridge. For example, Alan said, so we've got a bridge club that is focused around bridge, but doesn't do very much else. But when there are opportunities, people are keen to participate and enjoy themselves. And it's partly because we don't have the space. The second theme was the bridge was seen to support valued social identities, which members shared as bridge players, club members, or residents of the local community. Participants spoke animatedly about their love of playing bridge and there was a sense that bridge provided them with a positive social identity. Bridge players were described as thinkers, mentally active, as playing bridge well was attributed to skill rather than luck. For example, Linda says, playing bridge is not for everyone. You can't bluff at bridge. You've got to trust your partner. You and your partner have got a language. Second, there was a sense of agreement between participants that even though their club's physical environment was inadequate, they seemed to take pride in their club as being special and described it as friendly and caring. For example, Judy said, maybe it's because of our difficult circumstances here, because of our very small club. So it's particularly friendly, I think. Here we are all very easy go lucky. Participants also spoke of a ripple effect of feeling socially connected to the wider community beyond the club. For example, as Judy says, it's such a big club and we're part of a community and it carries all the way throughout this area. The third and final theme, the club, that is the place, the people and the activities was seen to help older people's ability to age well. For example, in the words of Peter, I've got several reasons why I go to the bridge club five days a week. I'm very competitive as a bridge player. I love meeting people and I don't like to stay home by myself all day. And similarly for Bess, I find it very important to come here every day. It's the reason to get out of bed. Peter and Bess are both octogenarians who live alone, widowed, retired, and could be considered at risk of social isolation. But for them, the club is a very big part of their lives. And in this analysis, we propose that it is the interrelationship of having shared spaces, shared activities, but most importantly, shared social identities that coalesce to provide them with a sense of well-being. In other words, it's not just about having a place to go or having something to do. Third places need to satisfy older people's need for positive social identities in order to provide a sense of meaning, purpose and agency, and as a consequence, their sense of well-being. In conclusion, community spaces facilitate the maintenance of positive social identities, which are important for well-being. Local group-based social identities support older adults' ability to age well and age in place. Seniors are capable of active roles in shaping their community spaces. Thank you.